Hey, all you rad dads out there. Tyler, thanks for joining me on the Rad Dad Show. I'm going to start the way we always do, and that's by asking you, who are you? So, um, I'm Tyler Pickering. Um, I am a father of two, I guess, young girls that are getting older. My youngest is four, five, sorry. My oldest is seven. Um, I actually went to their, uh, my oldest Christmas party tonight, or Christmas concert, sorry. And last night, my youngest Christmas concert, both were just adorable. Awesome. Um, I play in a few bands. I play in, in a uh, punk band called Chicks Dig It, which is an absolute blast, mm-hmm. uh, of course. And I also play in an instrumental band called the Ramblin' Ambassadors. Um, and then I have s- s- some other kind of just side projects that uh, that I kind of do for fun. So, okay. so that those- about wraps it. Yeah, so those are those are the main ones. You started with the kids, so hey, good good job. Put that first. Um, it's not a test, but yeah. Well, we'll see. Wink, wink. <laughs> yeah, you passed. Um, well, no, I, I'm so excited to talk to you. Had a couple of your bandmates from Chicks Digging on, yeah. so uh, yeah, it's nice to to finally get to connect. And we were talking before we sort of went live with the recording sure. um, mm-hmm. that we sort of have a connection in the past. Um, yeah. You know, we. Um, played together and sort of, you know, I followed your band and and your label meter records when you were in uh, the failure and the evidence. So it's really cool for me to to connect now, like, you know, 20, really cool. 20 some years later and, and more than 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. Bond over um, parenthood now. And actually totally. our kids are exactly the same age. Like yeah. I have a, I, and both, I have daughters as well. We were talking about that the other day yeah. when I saw you, mm-hmm. um, one who just turned five and one who's seven, just about to turn eight. Gotcha. Yeah. And we got the Christmas concerts happening too. I, I actually nice. took the day off work tomorrow and I'm going to the Christmas concert, which is in the middle of the day at their school. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We had um, uh, dress or maybe not dress, but just rehearsals that we were allowed to go see in the afternoon, but we wanted to see the main attraction, I guess. Yeah. They've got the whole thing happening in the middle of the day, which is kind of interesting. Maybe, you know, I don't know, maybe they didn't want so many parents coming or something, but they actually... They stream it on YouTube now. So like oh, wow. this this Crazy. is a world we live in as you can oh, watch your cool. kids' Christmas concert on YouTube. That's cool. Yeah. So two father of two girls. Um, do you consider yourself a rad dad? Uh you know, it's funny. I it's kind of um kind of depends on the day or depends on the time. My immediate thought is um my mom thinks I'm rad. For sure. Okay. Um because I'm definitely a dad. I can I can confirm that part uh, without question. That's for sure. The rad part is I think it's open for uh, for debate. I think you and I are both. We both have kids that are the age where yeah we're rad for sure. So if you're defining your radness by what your kids think, yeah, your kids yeah, think I'm you're rad. In there. But I do think that has a uh, expiry date. I see teenagers probably not wanting much to do with me uh when we get to that point um but there's a i almost strangely look forward to that i think it's kind of funny but um let's go with yeah well because we've been through that too right like i i i never really went through a phase of like being a jerk to my parents but i definitely went through a phase of like you know thinking i knew more than them and all that kind of stuff so we just general uh you know more right at arm's length like i see um, eventually I think these two rooms are going to become um, their rooms, um, or they're, they're both sharing a room now. So they're, they're going to get separate rooms at some point, but when they're teenagers, I just see coming in the door, going immediately into those rooms, either headphones or whatever goes on and just, you know, knock, 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 yep. nothing, knock, knock, knock. And then, uh, you know, break the door down and who knows, it's we'll, so it, it, we'll see. It's so sad to think about, but uh, we know it's coming. Um, so what, like, yeah. what, what makes you a rad dad? If you are a rad dad, what, what, like, what do you think those characteristics are? That's always something we're trying to kind of figure out on this show. Like, sure. Sure. You know, what is it that makes a dad rad? Well, um, I think, first of all, uh, I, I think the way that I look at it is I think there are, there's a stereotype and it's becoming um, sort of antiquated, but the whole thing where dad kind of sits on the couch and watches sports 
mom brings the beer, mom make, makes the dinner. Um, I've always felt like that lends itself to a, a separation from the kids as well. And I just, whether it's my friends or people that I see around or people I see it, you know, um, kids go or, or maybe we shouldn't say that play places. You can cut out the kids go. If we have to pay them. <laughs> yeah. Not, not an endorsement for kids. Yeah, go here. Not at all. Not at all. Yeah. But it just seems like dads are becoming more involved with the kids. And that's something that, that I think is rad. Um, my dad was always good that way, but um, I think it's important to be involved. And sometimes that just means hanging out and playing, you yeah. know, and, and being a little less selfish um my wife and i feel like we both found out how selfish we are once we had kids because suddenly you don't get to do everything on your own terms you don't yeah. get to do everything where, when you want to and things just get kind of a lot more is about your kids and then about you and you i had difficulty not feeling super selfish when i was frustrated by those things so um yeah i think it's important to be involved like the, with a baby, obviously it's, it's a different story. Just yeah. when kids get a little older and they are asking you to play, I think you should play with them. I think it's important to spend those times kind of like what we just talked about when it's alone in their bedrooms and they don't really want to talk to you anymore. You're probably going to be wanting to, or wishing you had been a little bit more involved before. So I think that's a, an important part. I'm trying to decide if, uh, if it should have anything to do with the other things that you do in your life. You know, like what kind of it, things like the fact that I play in a band or the fact yep. that I do yep. those things, because for my kids, it's always been totally normal. Chicks Dig It has always had a family aspect to it where we hang out with the families at practice. We have taken our kids on tour, which is total madness. And um, <laughs> I think to them, it's just normal. Yeah. And so the fact that if somebody is an accountant or somebody, uh, you know, whatever they do, there's no reason why that shouldn't be rad as well. And I think it's also important to point out that um, for some of the people that you've had on this show, mm -hmm. um, those are those are professional musicians, you know, and I have a day job and I I do this on the side. I certainly do not do this for money. Um, we all keep our day jobs so that we can play music to have fun. And I don't, wouldn't want to do it. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's good to get paid to play, yeah. but I wouldn't want that to be my source of income because I wouldn't want it to become work, I guess. Yeah. So. It's funny you bring that up. Like uh, both of your bandmates that have been on, on this show, KJ and Billy mm -hmm. both said the same thing. Like, um, and I think, I think KJ kind of explained it. Um, like it's it's like a prerequisite to be in the band that you kind of like you, yeah. you have to like kind of have your own thing already um yeah. because it allows you to uh make the right decisions as a band right and yeah. and do yeah. things because they're the right thing to do and because you want to do them and you're Absolutely. gonna have fun and all yeah. those kinds of things and um so like where that goes for me i guess what that makes me think about is like um like keeping the um the passion in it right like like you're kind of fall, following your passions sure you have a you know whatever like like me boring day job or whatever i like my yep. job actually in case yep. any of my coworkers are listening and I'm, I'm sure you do too but yep. but you know it's your job um but you also have these uh passions on the side yeah for sure right and it kind of allows you to keep that do you think that's an important aspect for your kids to see i just think it's an important thing in general so um you know, I, I really think it's important to not, uh, in, in my situation anyways, to not be what you do or, or define yourself by what you do for a living. But I just think it's important to um, to be passionate about things, to have hobbies, I guess, maybe is a good way to put it, and be yep. passionate about those things and make sure you do them. I think that's important. I think it's good for mental health. I think it's good for, for a lot of things. It's good for the community. So I, I think... I think that's a good idea for sure. How do you encourage that with your kids? Um, well, I, I, my dad always had musical instruments around, um, but he, there was never, my mom, my dad didn't 
there was never anything like that forced on me. It was just always there. So if I was interested, I could, I could pick up a guitar and, and play around or something like that. There was a while, geez, I guess this is probably the late eighties, early nineties, where my dad's band practiced at the house. Oh, cool. So I would hang out when they were jamming. It was a cover band. Uh, afterwards I would hang out with Joe, the drummer, and uh, he'd show me a few things and just kind of, just kind of hang out and, and kind of take it all in. Um, and I also learned that when I was really young, I would wear, my brother and I would both wear headphones and we'd go to my dad's gigs. Um, so it was always just kind of there. So I'm trying to do a similar kind of thing with my kids. I want musical instruments to be around. I want them to feel like they can, they can pick them up and play them, which they, which they do. Cool. Um, Sloan cool. is taking piano lessons and Ma Sloan is my oldest and Maisie is my youngest and uh, Maisie's I'm starting some kind of drum lessons with her. And then I think when she's a little older, she'll, she'll take some lessons from a, from a real drummer. Um, and <laughs> so, but there's also like, I, I love to paint. I love to draw. I love taking pictures. And I, I think it's just good to have those kinds of things around. So the the kids get interested in them. I, th I just think art is a, really important thing to anybody's life, whether it's appreciating it or making it. And I think my kids seem to be pretty interested in, in making it, which is a huge for me. That's awesome. Yeah. That, Cause that was a question I was going to ask you, like, obviously uh, music is important to you. Mm -hmm. um, sounds like you kind of gained that through osmosis from your dad who's a musician and, and you're kind of using that same approach with your kids a little bit, like have it be around. I totally agree with you that um, like just creativity in any sense, like kind of needs to be fostered, maybe like more like, especially so today, like uh, because it's so easy to be like disconnected from like the real world in front of you, you know, making yeah. something or interacting with, with something and big time like in person uh, yeah. as opposed to on your phone. And and I think you can do lots of cool things with phones Absolutely. and internet and whatever yeah. opens up a whole other thing. But um, oh. I feel really strongly about that too. So it's interesting to hear you say that. Um, so you're kind of, you're doing some lessons at home with your youngest. Yeah. In terms yeah, we, of drums. we picked up an electronic drum set because I okay. figured um, I've seen a uh, pretty good success with um, the varied sounds that you get in there and there's there's often songs you can play along with and i yep. just think that really helps keep the interest there so we'll sit down and sort of try to to go on the snare drum and and keep consistent with the click kind of thing and you know understanding that that she's five she's really good at it awesome um, and always get a good solid 10 minutes at the end or whatever just to to mess around and bang she around to really put it enjoy putting it on the marimba yeah setting which is just a whole bunch of different notes and then she just makes these crazy songs i guess and she loves it so i, I but again i i it just needs to be low pressure i think that's the the most yep. important yep. thing um i can obviously very easily justify renting an electronic drum set like that when i know i'm going to play it i know that's going to happen yeah i've got a, a jam space with an acoustic kit but when i just want to sit down uh at any time i knew i was going to be playing with it so it was an easy Basically, getting the kids any kind of instrument is an easy decision because I'll be mucking around with it at some point. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of that. You know, it's funny. That's kind of that way for me. And my my oldest daughter. I'm not going to make this about me, but um, maybe it's just like proud dad moment. But my oldest daughter, she started drum lessons in September. Oh, actually, you told me that. That's right. Yeah, and and she just had her first performance on Sunday. Oh, so like a recital, recital, like a recital. But but wow. it's like the, her um her her place where she takes lessons is called backbeat and their whole thing is about learning like kind of around rock and roll and awesome. and kind of in a band type setting she takes private lessons but it's about learning how to kind of play um in the context of like learning songs so they we kind of they, well you do that eventually she okay. she wasn't ready for that she's only been playing nope. three months so she <laughs> she played um fortunate son by ccr with her uh with her teacher who played guitar mm -hmm. but yeah she nailed it like awesome it, it's a it's pretty cool to see that come out and, and she so she's taking drums and guitar um but she's really latched onto drums she's good at it mm -hmm. um and i think she's getting a little bit more immediate 
um, satisfaction from it as opposed to guitar, which just takes sure. a little bit more finesse sure. and for their little yeah. hands and all that kind of stuff. So um, yeah, it's neat. You're going through that too. We have an acoustic kit. And so that's mm-hmm. a challenge at, at home uh, just from a noise perspective. I, I put some like mutes on it, um, yeah. which helps, but uh, yeah. yeah, that's, that's the one thing with your kids learning drums. It can be a little bit uh, loud. Yeah, I mean, uh, when I was in high school, my bands practiced at my house. Many times I would go upstairs to grab a drink or water or something like that, and somebody would play, be playing bass, and the wine glasses are shaking together, and it yeah. it was crazy how loud it was up there. And my mom and my stepdad put up with that for years. We did have a deal. Um, we'd be playing. I would race home as soon as we could after school to try and get as much time as possible. But my mom would come home from work and just flick the basement lights on and yep. off we would stop immediately no matter where we were in in whatever song but uh never had an issue with that because we were just super grateful to be able to to get there and play and again like when you go upstairs and hear how loud it was coming from down there would i put up with that <laughs> I, I keep asking myself that question and i hope that i would you know what Ooh. like it would be my dream for my kid to start a band like uh, yeah yeah, like not like not just selfishly because i think that's cool and you know like maybe it's kind of following in dad's footsteps a little bit but but like that's a productive thing to be doing like you're learning the teamwork and all that kind of stuff right that goes along with it like that's what i told uh elise like i i kind of said to her you know i said i'm really proud of you like um music has been such a important thing in my life like Mm -hmm. i I want you to have the opportunity to, to do that too. And if you're not into it, no problem. Um, but you know, it's brought a lot of joy to my life and she's like, Oh, cool. You know, and she sees it. Right. So totally. Of course they, you know, they, they see how excited you are about it. And you know, they're going to be excited too. For sure. Have they seen you play like with, with the band? Yes. Like I I don't, I'm not currently really in a, like I kind of, playing a couple different things but just casually but um yeah they they or have seen practice, they have seen me a couple times yeah they've seen me practice and do a couple yeah. things and they they think it's cool like they're like oh my god dad like yeah you know when, when they see that for the first time i like do you have any memories of your kids seeing you play for the first time well yeah so uh for the geez because it's it's hard the kids are young we we play late like it's just not even yeah, my mom yeah. it's a it's difficult for them uh to to come see us so but occasionally there's a festival kind of thing uh the ambassadors have played a few festivals that would happen in the day or earlier on and and the kids have seen that um we played it at nmc once and my wife and both kids came and they've got the headphones awesome. on and are kind of dancing around so yeah it's it's really 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 cool but i think i think the important part there is when they're watching me play um they can just tell that I love it. They can tell yeah. that I'm having an absolute blast. So um, it's, I absolutely, I mean, I played the, the, the ambassadors in Chicks Dig. It's been a long time. Like it's been 13 or 14 years with Chicks Dig it and over 20 in the Ramblin' Ambassadors. So those are my good friends. Yeah. And when you're, yeah. when you're playing like that, it's just, it's really exciting and really, really fun. And I'm sure they pick up on that yeah. and hopefully, you know, or hopefully not would, would want to do that too yeah and there's that fa- like you talked about that family atmosphere yeah. within the band too so like you know they're close with with the other guys too so just yeah, to see exactly. that all kind of come together on the stage yeah, i'm totally. sure is really really cool for them <clears throat> what what was going on in your life when you became a dad um i was playing in i think it might have technically been five bands um and you know we we Catherine and I got married in 2015 and almost immediately got pregnant so we uh, Sloan was born in April of 2016 so um it was uh basically I I I had to make a choice like something had to had to go um so I was playing in the evidence at that at that time there was a a double bass and double drum band called solid brown that i was okay. playing in at the time uh there was the evidence and we were we were practicing twice a week um and you know wanted to to tour and wanted to do a lot of stuff um and then there was chicks dig it so uh yeah some, something had to go so um 
basically uh, I wrapped up the evidence and that was about 15 years that, that we had done that. So that was a pretty important and, and kind of heavy thing. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, I kept playing solid Brown. Um, so kept kind of doing three band thing uh, and then had the full-time job. And that's been a pretty consistent. I've always played in a couple of three bands since, I mean, almost all the way back to the the nineties. So um I, my wife has said to me multiple times, uh, I know what I was getting into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Married you. Uh, but that really doesn't make me feel any better at all. So, you know, I, I, we, I had to make a little bit more time. The band that was re- rehearsing twice a week and had aspirations to do big things, I was thinking to myself, <clears throat> if some band called us up and said, we want to take you on a three-month tour, mm-hmm. which two or three years earlier would have been a dream. I honestly would have said no. And I would have said no with no regret. Like I I wanted to be home. Mm -hmm. So that at that point, it's like, look, guys, like there's your answer. I'm I'm holding things back. Like we're not going to be able to do the things we want to do. If you want to continue with a different guitar player, you should do that. And if, if not, then, then I'm sorry, but this is kind of what needs to happen. So when I told them that, that we were pregnant, they were they were ecstatic for me so it's not like it was a bad thing it wasn't a it wasn't wasn't not a bad thing yep. you know it was yeah, an yeah. emotional thing and it was hard to do but you know it had to happen and and they understood so yeah i mean when kids enter the picture yeah you you're forced to make some choices absolutely right? and um yeah i mean i i don't think it's a bad thing for some of those choices to be really hard like you know you like you kind of you made a comment. I, I can't remember exactly what you said just now, but you said something like, um, yeah, it doesn't make me feel any better to, mm. to know that, you know, that your wife um, like accepts that you're busy and you're playing in lots of bands. Cause so what I'm taking from that is you're, you're saying um, sometimes I f- still feel guilty. Like yeah, I can't well, be I mean, around uh, like yeah. for this event. Cause Hey, we booked yeah. this show a long time ago or whatever it is. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I missed things. For sure, yep. there's things that have been missed, and honestly, there's things that have been missed because of the job, um, and there's things that that my wife has missed because of yeah. her job or other things. And you know, you kind of want to be there for every event or every moment or every uh, big milestone. Um, well, if, if, if I use the term milestone, I, I think I've been there for most of those. But um, yeah, I, I just think it's important. And, and when my wife says that she knew what she signed up for. Um, that's coming from somewhere and where it's coming from is I think frustration with the fact that I'm going to do that thing or not going to be here for that thing or whatever. Right. So yeah. um, there's an understanding, but of course it's not always ideal. I think this is like a, a bit of a universal like parent experience though, is like just going through a series of like guilt trips, you know, and like kind kind of like sometimes you, learn from those because like, Hey, I, I screwed up. I should have made a different choice there, but sometimes Mm -hmm. it's just learning how to also deal with the fact that you, sometimes you just disappoint, like, or I don't know if you disappoint people, but you you just can't do everything. You can't be everywhere at once. Right. So, um, you kind of have to like, just deal with that at some point. Otherwise it can, it can just crush you as a parent. Like, you know, it's like, like, like when you take your kid to the park and they, you let them go down the slide by themselves and they fall off the edge and like, you know, like, yeah. you're like, why wasn't I there? Why didn't I? <laughs> totally. You, you just can't be. Anything like that. Yeah. For sure. And, but I, I, I also think that, um, I guess I kind of refuse to believe that that's not universal for everyone. Yeah. I don't think there's a parent in li- alive that, that truly feels like they were there for everything or didn't mis- make any mistakes. I think making mistakes are a, a good way to learn. And yep. uh, I've made a lot of them for sure. And, and actually a good way for your kids to learn, I think too, mm-hmm. like how you respond to when you make a mistake, for sure, for um, sure. how you teach them how to cope and, you know, like how, they see how you cope with, with negative feelings and they kind of yeah. learn from that. Right. Yeah. I'm starting to realize that more and more uh, as time goes on, like it's not really uh it seems really simple, but it's like, not what I tell the kids. Like, I, you know, I screw up and I try and apologize to them or I try and explain things to them. But I think more so it's how, like what they see 
me do or they yep. they hear me say or how I react like for sure that's what they pick up I sometimes see my kids like you know respond to something by like you know losing their temper or whatever and I'm like man they they learned that from me no question you know same here same so, here I know they didn't lose it I learned it from my mom or from their mom um and that's that's actually that's a big one for me that's something that uh I I don't want to say that I struggle with anger necessarily but I have a temper yeah and um I lose it. Yeah. You know, and I don't, you know, and there's an immediate regret yes. if I was to have any oh kind my of God, yeah. like that. Um, and then the easily the, the, like there's that, which is tough, but then yeah. Watching your daughter or son uh, basically do the same thing exactly the way that you did it is uh, yeah. It's almost like you don't want to see it. Yeah, it's so funny. You know, my my mom, like, I, I don't know, may, a, a lot of maybe a lot of people wouldn't know this. But my mom, when I reflect back on it, she had a, a temper, like she's yeah. like the sweetest lady, but like, you push her over the edge, and sh she would like lose it. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember having those discussions as a kid, like sometimes she'd come to me and be like, Hey, sorry, I lost my temper and whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's like, fuck, I turned into my mom here. Like, yeah. Yeah. you know, totally. So, so to a certain extent, like, that's probably natural that that's going to happen. But uh, yeah anyway like that's what that's what you deal with day to day yeah. as a parent is like For you're sure. not you're not gonna hit it out of the park every time did yeah. did becoming a dad change you do you think uh totally totally um but certainly not for the worse i would say um there's a First of all, again, again, I, I think I have to get back to that um, selfishness again, because um, you're just not that important. Yeah. You know, and you weren't that important before you had kids, but then you have kids and it's like, oh, now I, I fully see it. Like there's whether, whether you're just looking at because, again, the the um, the feelings that I had the first time I saw my oldest daughter held her in my arms you know you do this sort of um i forget what they call it but you kind of take your shirt off and do skin on skin yep skin on skin yeah. is that what it's called skin to skin um, yeah yeah those moments were incredible and then every day and every night for the few first few weeks it's just sort of um simultaneously mind-blowing what's going on as well as really difficult mm -hmm. you know um there's always lots of crying and there's crying and and crying where you you just can't figure it out and you can't seem to do what it is that that they want um but there's a little more humility i would say yeah. in in my life i feel like i feel like i'm a little bit better at um sort of knowing in any situation that there's a lot that i don't know mm -hmm. so whether it's a conversation you're having with somebody and you know they're acting strange or they're angry or whatever it is and whatever interaction we just had or, or however much i know about that person through that interaction that's one percent of whatever whatever's going on in their life and i have no idea you know when you go through difficult times and you lose people or you lose family members um and you're in that place you start to realize well shit that was weird but and that that person might also be in that place that I remember mm -hmm. being in. Um, and so I don't know if, I don't know if the kids did that or if that would have happened naturally, but um, there's just, there's, there was a little bit more focus, I think on, um, on bettering myself, maybe. Like I totally identify with what you just said. Um, like, is it, is it like humility uh, you said humility is it mm -hmm. also like empathy like kind of like somehow opening up yeah. a door to to more um empathy like maybe that exercise yeah. of like caring for yeah. your child like well and and really um really paying attention to try and figure out what signs they're giving you to yeah so that you know what to to do to stop them from crying basically um but I, I, I always feel like I've been a pretty empathetic person and my oldest daughter is very empathetic. I remember mm -hmm. driving, speaking about that temper again, I remember driving and she, she's in the back, right. Um, 
car seat so she can see me. Yeah. Um, and I don't remember what I said or if I slammed my hands on the steering wheel, something happened. And I was making a left turn. I remember that. And I'm, I'm on the highway and then we're on the road. And, and I just hear, are you okay, daddy? And I was like, I am the worst. Yeah. So it's, it, it's those moments where I yeah. do not feel like a rad dad. Let, let's, let's um, sort of make that, that clear. And there's lots of moments when I do, but um, she watched the whole thing. But I think rather than question what happened, she just wanted to know how I felt or if I was yeah. okay. And, you know, how do you not shed a tear after something so like sweet. that happens and just yeah. go, man, I need to be, I need to be better. I need to, I need to work on that, you know? Yeah. They teach you a lot, right? Your kids teach yeah. you a lot. And, and like, I find, especially as, um, as they get older, like, um, as they start to interact with the community, mm-hmm. like, I feel like that's been a huge eye opener for me. Like, it's kind of a, I don't know. I, I don't want this to be taken the wrong way by anybody who has faced adversity with their kids as a small child. Okay. Like, um, my caveat is I've had relatively healthy kids and like mm-hmm. relatively quote unquote, kind of normal experiences with them growing up Mm -hmm. um but i feel like for me i feel grateful that it kind of was like these little stepping stones right like start as like selfish everything's all about me and then my child is born and you're kind of like you've got this little baby that like really it's just about kind of keeping them alive and you know loving them and like that's all you can really do Mm-hmm. And then it just kind of slowly gets more and more complex, right? Then mm-hmm. it's like more emotional needs and support and, you know, their friend groups and all these things that mm-hmm. kind of happen. And I feel like with each step of the way that like opens up um, your appreciation for the fact that the world is a huge place mm-hmm. with lots mm-hmm. of diverse experiences and and things like that and you're just this like one little experience right and there's yeah. so much you can learn from from interacting with your community and watching your kids interact with the community mm-hmm. I, i'm mm-hmm. not sure really where i was going with that but um yeah i think it's where i guess what i'm getting at is it's like it's a learning experience right Big time. You know? I, one of the biggest things for me is um and i find myself internally asking this question a lot um how the hell do i answer that question yeah. what do i say you know, there's lots of questions, both kids, like my five-year-old, when she was three or four, would ask these um, just heavy questions that, you know, sometimes whether we're, maybe we're driving in the car, both kids in the back and, and my wife is with me and somebody asks a question and we just both kind of look at each other like, did you want to give that a, a, a try? You know, I don't, I don't know what to say. I can't really think of a specific example at the moment, but there's been many, many times where I I stop and I just try to think of the best way to answer that question. That's going to be, it could be as simple as what does this word mean? Yeah. You know, our language is pretty messed up and there's a lot of weird things and multiple meanings of the same word. So, you know, somebody, when, when I have difficulty sometimes defining a word when, when they ask what the word means and you kind of want to use a, a simile and then like, well, what does that word mean? And then you're like, okay, yeah. well, yeah. I, like I, some I, kind I of like figure of speech or whatever, like, yeah. You know, what does that mean? The one that comes to my mind, the kids have asked a couple, because this just a couple days ago, Nora, mm-hmm. our youngest asked, like, how are babies made? Oh, it's I like, mean, fuck, I should have studied up. Like, shouldn't I have anticipated that question? Yeah. I, I was not prepared to answer it so, for a five-year-old yeah, how, old brain, you know? How old, like, how old can they, are they allowed to be before you can't just say that it's magic anymore? Right. Like, yeah. Like, I, I think I answered that question as magic once because i didn't know what to say but yeah um, that's a tough one yeah there's yeah like you want to like things you maybe don't want to know yet for sure like not maybe not all the details like i I feel pretty strongly about like i don't want to really lie to my kids like there's some some things you kind of have to like we were talking about um santa (laughs) we were talking about santa earlier right and like there's there's magic in in that whole experience right and I think I'm kind of like prepared for that conversation when it does happen. But like, I, most of the time, I don't really want to like overtly lie. I want to tell them just enough to like have it make sense to, for where they're at right now. But that's actually really hard to do. Totally. Totally. I think it's super hard. Um, My oldest is sharp. 
she's really really sharp so i don't remember i think it might have been last year she had basically said that she doesn't think that that santa exists mm-hmm. and the problem is that when she said that i know without a question that the look that she got from both myself and my wife confirmed it for her you know <laughs> and i i get i got this feeling from there that she was maybe just kind of um going with it yeah maybe because of my my youngest was around or for mm-hmm. my youngest or whatever but she's you know six years old at that time and already making those questions and i don't know yeah. maybe that's because her after school care she's hanging out with grade six or seven yeah <laughs> that's but, part uh, of it for us too yeah it's a it's a thing yeah yeah we've got like some uh our kids go down to school care too and there's some older kids that are there and yeah mm-hmm. there's definitely been some things that kind of make their way home that i'm like yeah that's where you got that right like yeah, for sure. there's no way you would have been hearing that from your peers but yeah. you know that's part of it too like again i'm like okay well i don't want to like the approach we were talking about like cursing before like i don't know what it's like mm-hmm. in your house but we're pretty lax with it in our house mm-hmm. because um our kids catch us doing it too so i i don't want to be the kind of person who's like I can say it, but you can't. I'm more trying to teach them the context. Like I would never say fuck off to my boss Yeah, at work. You know, I would never say that. Um, But if I yell it at someone when I'm driving in the car, it's a kind of a different thing. Right. But so you're trying to like, uh, maybe, maybe I'm not uh, spelling. No, I I, I think what it might be is the, the um, severity. Yes. You know, I've, I've tried to explain that, um, those are words that somebody might use when they're really, yes, tr- really excited about something, really angry about something, what it, whatever yeah. it happens to be. Um, and so it, it loses that uh, impact if you use it all the time. So, yep. but that's and, not really saying that you shouldn't say it either. So, yeah. And, and they hear it in music too. That's the other place True. that I find they hear it like more than from us, they hear it in music. And I just mm-hmm. like, I'm, I'm not going to censor it in music. So I just kind of say, well, that's like, that's art. Art's a little different. Like you might go to an art gallery and you'll see a painting of like a naked woman. Mm. Like um, that's different than, because that's art. That's different yeah. than like a naked woman walking down the street, you yeah. know, like that's yeah. a different thing. So trying to help them understand that. But anyway, it's, yeah. It's- I could see my youngest saying, basically telling your teacher to fuck off. And then explaining <laughs> to us that, no, it was, it was art. I could yeah. totally you're using that to do that. My dad said it's okay if I sing it. Exactly. Yeah, totally. <laughs> you would do that for sure. Yeah, that's that's hilarious. Um, so what are what are if you had to like a uh, pinpoint a couple rewarding things about being a parent? I think we've t- touched on some already, but mm-hmm. uh, if you had to pinpoint a couple, what would those be? I think um I think with Sloan, my oldest, uh it's it's probably the piano i think that was it you know what though when when she was younger and uh just really really good at drawing i remember being really really proud about that um are are, are you talking sort of moments that are always extra proud or yeah um, can, like any of I, that I, like it can be big picture it can be yeah, yeah. yeah anything that that pops to mind that like yeah made you feel really good and you know, yeah, as a dad. I mean, there's, do you by chance remember the first time either of your girls said they love you to you? Oh, that's a really good question. Because I don't I... know if I can pinpoint the the actual moment, but it seems like there was sort of a range, a time for both of them. Um, I guess maybe a, a better way to put it is when they started to say that. Um, and yeah, there's, there's a way my oldest says it to me that still yep. sort of just stops time for that moment and you kind of want to go back to that moment if, if you could and, and live in that moment kind of thing um but i you know not to sound sort of or cliche or kind of going back on what we we've been talking about earlier but there's just something about creating mm-hmm. you know my my daughter is re my oldest daughter is just she she makes things she makes bracelets and gives them to her friends she makes necklaces and all of these things and she's really um uh prolific and proficient with it like she's good at doing it it does it quickly um and there's just something i can see the reward that it is for her both to finish the thing but she's always making it for somebody 
And so you know that she's thinking about that person while yeah. she's making it. It's just, it's just the cutest thing. But um, that's a that's a big one for me. I with with Maisie, she's just always been um, attracted to the drums, and I've always I've just always loved that that idea. Whether it's just tapping on things or actually using some sticks, but I, I find that uh, that super super rewarding. Um, I'm not sure, man. I I feel yeah. like some of those those sort of moments, I think they happen every day. You know, yeah, it, it, it's crazy. It's hard to distill it down, right, into like yeah. simple things. I, like you know what you said about uh, when your kids say "I love you." Like maybe, um, because I, I, I agree with that too. I think there there's probably a period where you you realize that they're not just kind of parroting it. Cause they hear mm -hmm. you say it, yeah. like, they actually mean it. Like there's a, there's a time when you know that they mean that what they're saying. Right. Yeah. I, I might be putting my finger on um, saying it without, without it being a response, without right. it being a response to me saying it. Um, and that's, that's something that I think happens a, a little bit later on. And I'm not sure. I think Maisie might've said it a couple of times, but Sloan says it without responding to me saying yeah. it. And that's makes me feel like it's super genuine, you know. Yeah. Not that I would ever feel like they don't love me, but something about hearing it. It's something the expression of it. Yeah. it. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's like when they run up and give you a big hug because they're, totally. they're genuinely happy to see you. It's yeah. that same yeah. thing. You feel but... them squeezing. Yeah. Because I'm one of those uh, little couple taps on the back, and I'm just hugging you because you're hugging me. Yeah. They're squeezing and looking for that hug. It's amazing. Totally. totally. I want to circle back. You mentioned um, your dad and and mm -hmm. your stepdad, and maybe we can uh, you can tell me a little bit about your relationship with your your dad and or mm -hmm. your stepdad. Um, obviously, your dad has had a big mm -hmm. Im influence on um, the musical part of your life. Sure. Like, how about how about in terms of like the way you approach parenting and things like that? Do you do you think about that at all? Do you reflect on that at all? Is I, that I do, I do, yeah. and I actually I I would say that I reflect on it. Um, for both my dad and my stepdad, um, it's it's kind of a it's an interesting timeline. Like I, my parents got divorced when I was twelve, okay, um, and things were pretty rocky with my dad for several, if not more, years right after that. Um, where, I mean, my dad, my brother went to live with him for a little while, and then he didn't like that and came back and lived with my mom, and I had just stayed with my mom. But there were some times where I felt like they were sort of uh, I guess kind of playing us off each other a little bit. It's and, so complicated, uh, right? It's I, and, I, and I just cannot imagine being in that position. I mean, I I can't really imagine what it's like to even have a a twelve year old. But um, like, how do you answer some of those questions? You know, when mm -hmm. when you're when you're getting divorced. But um, so I uh, we ended up we were living in Edmonton, um, moved to Calgary when my mom met my my stepdad um or a year or so after she met him or whatever and uh he sort of became the the formative uh i guess those are just really important years i mean from 12 to 20 for sure or 12, 12 to 44 uh they're just it's there's really important things happening there that i really have to hand to my stepdad there, there's some there's some qualities that i have that i believe he really instilled during those times like i believe um for my whole family whether it's my mom's side of the family or my dad's side of the family work ethic has always been a, an important thing um so it's not really that as much as maybe respect was a big thing with him and mm -hmm. um and earning it and and trying your best to um to to give it um, and so there's just, there's a lot that I learned from him during that time. And then I, I, I don't remember when around, but somewhere around my twenties, I, I kind of patched things up with my, with my dad. Um, and yeah, they're, they're, they are very different people. And I think I'm like Tim, my stepdad, for example, not musical at all. Um, he would, I think there was a story my mom had where he was singing along with something. And this is back in the day of car phones. Yeah. So they had car phones and I think he didn't fully hang up the phone or something like that. And then just started singing along with this song. And he just had, he was, he was tone deaf. If there's a, a, a person who was, 
he had a kind of a raspy voice, but he just couldn't hit a note, but he loved music. So he's listening to music and wanting to get into it, but it, it, was, it was super, super funny. So there's this like, I don't want to say being responsible, but a, a respect from a, a businessman sort of style. Okay. And then there's a emotion and art and, um, you know, sort of, and I don't want to say that these two things aren't mutually inclusive or exclusive. It's not like to be focused on art and be really, really passionate about and creative. It's not like you can't have integrity or respect, but yeah. having yeah. both of those be different focuses from both of those role models, I think is, is kind of interesting for sure. Yeah, that, that is really interesting. And, and interesting how, as you get older, you, you can kind of like reflect back and obviously like, you know, parents going through a divorce, that's a really challenging time for a kid yes, and the, the whole family and mm -hmm. all those things. Right. And, and looking back, you know, I even think about adversity, you know, I've gone through in my life, like you look back and you realize like, geez, my parents were people like when you're mm -hmm. a kid, you don't really, at least I didn't really think of my parents as like real people who had their own interests, yeah. Yeah. their own lives yeah. before I came around and all totally. those things. And so I don't know, maybe there's this little ability, there's an ability as you get older to kind of like rationalize some of the, some of the things that they did. And, mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't know that, and, and recognize you know, it's important yeah. to know uh, everybody makes mistakes, you know, I, and everybody makes big mistakes and uh, you just have to accept that. Yeah. 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 And yeah, you've got, you kind of got a couple ways to go from there. Like you can mm -hmm. like walk away or you can try and kind of deal with it. Right. And so, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, that's really interesting to kind of hear those two kind of different influences that your dad and your stepdad mm -hmm um had on your life and um you know i i really i really liked when you described earlier how um like you remember having music around the house um mm -hmm. but it not really being forced on you and kind of taking that same approach with your kids it it's neat to hear how how those kind of memories as a child and those experiences yeah. as a child kind of feed into the way you you parent as you you get older yeah i i, I have a, a favorite story about taking piano lessons Okay. I I think that I got to grade four in the Royal Conservatory thing, so that would have been four exams. Yep. That I would, and we were living in Spruce Grove and would drive into Edmonton to do the exams. And I, I remember them being high pressure and really cold and formal and, yes. and all those kinds of things. Um, but we would go to Red Robin afterwards and have a chocolate milkshake. Hell yeah. And. <laughs> the fourth test or fifth or whatever it was, I don't remember how, how far I got into it. I remember my mom asking me um, if I'm still enjoying the piano lessons, right? Um, it's probably watching me sit there with my milkshake and I was probably deep in thought or something like that. So I, the way I answered it was like, well, I really, really like going for these milkshakes. <laughs> so she was like, we don't have to take piano lessons to go for milkshakes. So do you want to keep doing it? And I was like, no, I don't, I don't at all. And I think there's, so there's an interesting thing where she, she wasn't forcing it on me in any way, but I had started it. So I just thought I had to keep doing it, or that was a mm -hmm. thing that I was expected to do. Um, so I appreciate that she had asked me that on that day, because I feel like I haven't taken another music lesson since. So I, I picked up guitar, I picked up the drums, and I just think that that whole journey would have been completely different if I would have kept up with those piano lessons. Like I'm, I may have, maybe I would have turned into one of those guys that can sit in on a gig with, with a chart or, or music or whatever. Um, and I just, I find that really strange. Yeah. I can't imagine playing something and not looking at the other people I'm playing with or looking at the audience or concentrating on what I'm doing and just looking at a, a piece of paper. I, I think that is an amazing thing to be able to do. You hear about some of those famous drummers that played that first take of that song on that recording, you know, first take, and it was, it was perfect kind of thing. Um, I, I, I'd like to say that I could do the occasional first take and nail the first take, yeah. but it certainly wouldn't be from reading. It would be from memory and, and yeah. concentrating on that sort of thing. So I, I, I just, yeah, I think it's important that um, 
that those things aren't forced on you and you're allowed to, to choose or allowed to, to quit. And, you know, quitting is, is okay. Yeah. You know, that something we're talking about a lot in our family that like there, there is, there you're always walking that line between like, Hey, I'm, I'm going to kind of like gently force my child into this just mm -hmm. to give the expose them to it and yeah, see exactly. if they like it. Um, you know, and you, you kind of have to assess like, okay, maybe even if they do say they want to quit, like, why do they want to quit? Is there yeah, another absolutely. reason? Like, is it the time that it's happening? Is it their teacher? Like mm -hmm. maybe there's something we can figure out. Um, but yeah, like my daughter dropped out of gymnastics not that long ago and it was mm -hmm. like, yeah, okay. Like you don't like it. Fine. No problem. And how did that conversation go? Did she just up and say it or were you asking her or yeah, was she, she engaged? You know what? She just kind of started saying like, I don't want to continue after this season's mm -hmm. done. And we're like, okay, we kind of try to explore that a little bit. Like why sure. she was kind of, I think what she was worried about was it was going to get competitive. And she was just like, I don't have any interest in that. That's she awesome. saw like some of the other kids, like, you know, they had to practice like, you know, six hours a week or whatever. She didn't want that. She thought it was fun. She liked doing it, but didn't want to be a gymnast. Right. And um, so I, I feel the same way. Like I, I kind of got, uh, okay, not pressured. I shouldn't say that. That's not fair. I felt like I had to play baseball when I was a kid and I couldn't quit. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, I didn't like it. Like I didn't like it. I wasn't good at it. I certainly wasn't good at it. Um, and finally, when I was 12, I had to tell my parents like, I'm tired of warming the bench here. I just want to quit. Right. Um, and I definitely don't want that experience for my kids. Yeah. Like if they're, if they're really not into it, then, then great. Like, yeah. because look at, look at the trajectory of your life. Like from, mm -hmm. from that discussion with your mom, who, who realized like, oh, maybe he's not into this. Right. Mm -hmm. And where that's taken you in your life. And, you know, it's funny, a lot of people watching, listening, they might, they might know you only from Chicks Dig It, or maybe just from Chicks Dig It and Ramblin' Ambassadors, where you're the drummer. But I at first knew you as like a ripping yeah, yeah. guitar player. Like that's <laughs> that that was you know Tyler to to me, and so a lot of people might not realize that. So that's really interesting to hear that you started with piano and then kind of got yeah. to, to guitar. Yeah, and it, um, I I often get asked like which I like better, which um, like guitar or drums. Um, which feels a little bit like, you know, what's your, what have you, which of your kids is your favorite kids? Like yeah. it's a, they're totally different and I love them both. Um, honestly, I just think there's maybe one drummer for every 10 or 12 guitar players. So when it comes down to it, I'm going to get more gigs on the drums for sure. Um, and I haven't really played much guitar. I played here and I play on my own. I played with, with my wife and my kids, but, um, I haven't played in a band since um, the evidence, which was, was that 2016, I think is when that ended. So um, yeah, a lot of people probably don't don't know that I, I play guitar, but um, they're just two different two different ways of expressing the same thing sometimes. Yeah, yeah, it's funny you said that about um, getting gigs easier. I, I've sort of said that to my daughter. I'm like, yeah, I know Dad's a guitar player, um, mm -hmm. but like. I can tell you bands in town were always looking for a good drummer. So if you can get to be a good drummer, you can play with any band you want. Absolutely. <laughs> I she doesn't and really I, care right now, but it's true. I honestly think that's true. Um, there's been a few sort of more, um, I guess, crazy nights with Chicks Dig It out on tour where um, we, we switch up instruments. Like when, when Kepi Gooley was playing bass with us for a little while, uh, we would back up him Mm -hmm. um and sometimes the instruments would change sometimes like there's i guess maybe once every probably four or five years maybe three or four years i'll be sitting at the kit and next thing i know kj standing right next to me and he's he's playing now yeah so i would get up and i would play guitar and it was always fun to watch everybody kind of you know mind blown that kj can play the drums and, and mind blown that i'm playing guitar kind of thing but um those are uh those are usually nights where we've all probably partaken a little bit too much. And I yeah. don't have a it probably was horrible, um, but it was fun. That much. That's exciting to watch that kind of stuff though. Yeah. Agreed. So, and well, speaking of that, that's a good segue. Well, let, let's talk about what's coming up for sure, yeah. Chicks Dig It and Ramblin' Ambassadors. <laughs> Ambassadors. So it's the, it's the holiday season right now. Um, mm -hmm. So Chicks Miss is coming up in Calgary. Yeah. Uh, Modern Love, right? 
uh december 23rd yeah 23rd it's an early show so it's basically the same format as the um the edmonton one where it's it's done by around nine um and yeah we're gonna play some christmas carols and we're gonna play some christmas christmas carols that we've uh made our own i would say yeah um i think there's a lot of people maybe grown when they think about christmas carols or christmas music and you know, you read all over the internet when when November 10th or 12th or preferably after Remembrance Day rolls yeah, around, yeah. you get all the Christmas carols and they're rolling around in your head. But um, they're they can be fun to play. I think they're hilarious a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, when we sat down and kind of figured out how to play them, we kind of realized that a lot of them are the same. It's actually difficult to get them straight sometimes and you yeah. can kind of sing one over the other. Um but it's a blast. We, we, we have a super good time. Plus, uh, and I can't remember if we did this in Edmonton, but KJ has a couple of, of songs he wrote that are Christmas based or Christmas themed and they're awesome songs. So I'm hoping that we can, I don't think uh, we got those in Edmonton. We may not have gotten that. I'm pretty sure. Mm, okay. Um, you know, I, I won't, uh, I don't want to pressure anybody because I, I know what it's like to, yeah. to play a new song for the first time in front of people. So I don't want to, um, Actually, maybe I do. <laughs> so I'm maybe this is your chance. To yeah. Songs. yeah. Okay. You, you heard happen. it here first. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So I was at the Chicksmith show in, in Edmonton. Um, Silent Night was the the highlight for me. That yeah. was a good Christmas song. That I think you guys it's, a, did. it's a rocking version of, uh, yeah. of that song. Uh, we won't be playing Jingle Bells, though. That's a, that's a good point maybe to make because okay. that's easily the the worst Christmas song, I think, anyways um yeah oh well, there there's just better christmas songs out there yeah. right yeah exactly uh, and, more, and then more uh, Red of... masters also right. have uh thrown together a couple of um of christmas songs so it's uh it should be fun it's uh it's funny it's fun uh it's always a good time so so much fun and yeah it sounds like some different songs if you came to the show in edmonton like it's only a couple hours away to to get down to calgary on december 3rd i don't think anybody's got anything else going on around christmas so um yeah, yeah, they should head down for that. Well, I, mean, I mean, a chick's dig it said is kind of always different. So, yep. um, you know, I have no idea where where it's going to go. Every night I have no idea. I don't know what songs we're going to play. We've learned songs on stage before. We've really messed things up on stage before. And, uh, yeah, it's it's always a, always a blast for me. I don't think there – I don't think there's a band out there that can um, – mess up a song in a better way than chicks dig it can like yeah. like you guys know how to to we're like, really good at it we've done it bounce, a lot yeah to to bounce back from it and I, yeah I'm, like it's part of the the chicks dig it experience and that's what i love although i should say um mm -hmm. i think i mentioned this to billy but i think when you guys played in edmonton the last time i think that was maybe uh the best i've ever seen you guys play like you guys were awesome. Just a couple weeks ago? Yeah, just a couple awesome. weeks ago. It was like super yeah. tight. It was great. So, um, you know, and, and you guys are always great. So it was like next level, Thanks. I felt. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't, um, hmm. Do I take that, that back to the band and we discuss <laughs> uh, maybe practicing less? Because we <laughs> already to work, yeah. um, don't, don't practice much. I remember practices with the ambassadors where we would get together maybe after like, three weeks of not getting together a month or something like that. And we sit down and we start chatting and then it's 11. Yeah. And we're like, well, I guess we should go home. And we didn't even pick up an instrument or play anything. It was just fun to hang out. So I, that, that can happen with chicks dig it occasionally, but um, yeah, we didn't practice a whole lot before that. So maybe we should. Yeah. It worked that that energy comes through on the stage anyway, right? Like that relationship that you guys have. Um, I think that's what what people love about the band too. Yeah, um, I mean, I have I have a pet peeve. And that okay. is um, watching a band that kind of takes themselves too seriously. Yes, totally. um, I really pick up on that. And you know, anytime there's sort of maybe tension from between one member and another member, I, I always feel I always feel that. Um, or if it's a really, really big band, sometimes you can get the impression that like these guys don't hang up. Right. You know, these, these guys are in a band, they're doing their job in a lot of cases and they're just uh, guys that are working together. 
Um, and don't get me wrong, because that's that's great. And if that's what you do and that's your job, I think that's amazing. Yeah. But I I want to do it um, with my best friends. And if you screw up or do dumb th- stuff with your best friends, it's it's always a good time. Like I just want to have fun. For and, sure. Uh, every show, we have fun. So it works. anything anything else coming up for Chicks Dig It or Ramblin' Ambassadors? Anything else you want to tell uh, listeners about? Well, um, the Ramblin' Ambassadors are playing on December 30th uh, for the Ship and Anchor Saturday afternoon oh, yeah. uh, showcase. Uh, we have a residency at the Ship and Anchor where we play the first Saturday after Christmas every year. Okay. So it's a cool. yearly residency. Um, and the only catch is that uh, my my mom is taking uh, me and the kids and the family to Hawaii. And we're leaving oh, okay. on that day. Um, okay. So we've got a, a guy filling in to, to play drums that night. Okay. So, but still go down and check it out because uh, Brent Cooper playing the electric guitar is a... One of the best things um, ever. Behold, uh, every single time you, you get to see it or, or hear it. I, like I'm, I'm a really, really, really lucky guy to, uh, to be able to play with guys like that. Um, and then when it comes to Chicks Dig It, I think it's important to note that I, I think I joined the band in 2008. Um, and so Pink Razors had come out a, a couple years earlier. But the important part being that throughout the 90s and the early 2000s, they did all the hard work. They did all the hard touring and all the getting out there and building it to what it is now. And then I jump in uh, once all that hard work is done. So yeah, it's really, really lucky to be able to do those things for sure. Yeah. Credit to to all of those guys, right? Everybody who's kind of been part of the band uh, through the history. Um, Yeah. You talked about Brent Cooper and uh, yeah, I'm not going to ramble on too much. Um, Fit a dad joke in there. Um, Yeah. Um, Like Brent, I never realized uh, really who Brent was, but when Mm -hmm. I kind of made the connection that he was in Huevos Rancheros, that was a band. uh, They had a, they had a song um, on much music, a video on much music for what a way to run a railroad. Of course. And as a young guy who was playing guitar, like I remember sitting, I had it recorded on my V like on a VHS. Of course. And I would just watch it over and over and try to like, you know, there's no tabs. You can't go on the internet and figure it out. But I remember like trying to learn that riff. And that was like a formative moment in my guitar playing history. And then so it's yeah, yeah, it's neat to to see um yeah again it's like kind of this full circle thing. Like Oh, wow, mm-hmm. in the same room as this guy he doesn't realize yeah. what an impact he's had on on me and on yeah. so many people like brent is that kind of uh, guitar player right he's just it's amazing. Absolutely crazy. there and there's a there's you know we often hear the um you know you say you guys are instrumental hey like you know i've got i've got this buddy he's got great pipes <laughs> and so we're like well you know then we wouldn't be an instrumental band and okay. i feel there's as much expression in that guitar as there is with any singer I've ever seen sing. Totally. And to me, that, that's all you need for that band anyway. Yeah. You, you, the Ramblin' Ambassadors, like I think with any instrumental band, your challenge is getting the crowd into it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, when, when you've got like a singer, whatever, you'd be like, ah, like what's up, Edmonton? You know, mm-hmm. but um, Ramblin' Ambassadors, I just love watching you guys for that reason because it's like starts out and like people are like, oh yeah, like this guy's pretty good. Like if, if they haven't seen you before, maybe they don't know what to expect. This guy's yeah. pretty good. Like, and then as it goes on, like the energy picks up in the set. And it's always mm-hmm. like you look around and everybody's like totally dialed into what you guys are doing. Like, awesome. yeah, it's it's amazing. So yeah, kudos. If anybody out there hasn't seen Ramblin' Ambassadors, go check them out too. Um, yeah, Tyler, nice. th- thanks for taking the time to to chat with me yeah. um yeah it's long overdue and um yeah, Agreed. Super, Agreed. super super appreciate your time um i always like to end by asking if you have any advice for dads out there listening i think the 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 biggest one for me is do your best to be there because i i on it i really do feel like there's i mean i i remember my mom saying it to me I guess I don't know for sure how old I was, but there will be a moment where you will miss them and, and wish I think that you were there more in those moments and just be there. I think be there is, is being there is huge. So that's awesome. Advice. That is, that's awesome.
It does. Yeah, that's great advice. Thanks, Tyler. Really yeah, you did. It. I